Hello and welcome to this video about mathematics. In this video we'll learn how to write a computer program that can calculate the nth derivative of the tangent function. This means that we'll be able to calculate the derivative of this function that's indefinitely large, like for example the thousandth or even millionth derivative of this function. We'll use a storage table to store all of the constants needed to calculate it. The nth derivative of this function can become quite messy, and is best done by computer. It is useful because it can be used to find the tangent of matrices. We'll firstly start to calculate the first few derivatives of tangent by hand. We'll start with this equation, that uses the tangent function, that's well known in trigonometry. So the first step will be to rewrite this function as the ratio of these trigonometric functions, that we already know the derivatives of. So to find the derivative we'll use the quotient rule and we'll use dash notation because it doesn't get as messy and we're only differentiating with respect to x. So after expanding and simplifying a bit we get this fraction. And the value of the numerator is 1 in this case. This is a famous trig identity. And since the secant function is the reciprocal of the cosine function, we can write it out as secant squared. So that's it, we found the first derivative of the tangent of x. So now to find the second derivative, we'll just find the derivative of secant squared. We'll write it out in this form, because we can easily use the chain rule. The chain rule gives us this string of terms multiplied together. And we can simplify them a bit the negative signs cancel out. We can write it out as this fraction. So the sine function is divided by one of the cosines to give us the tangent function in the numerator. And so we can write it out like this, as the multiple of tangent and secant. It turns out that these two trig functions are the only ones we need to express any of the derivatives. So now we can simplify things a bit by setting these two variables to be equal to these trig functions. Notice that s is equal to secant squared and not secant. And these are the first two derivatives and the original function, expressed in this new st notation. This notation should help to clear up a lot of the messiness. We can also derive these equations from the equations above, to express the derivatives of these variables in terms of themselves. So now to find the third derivative, we'll express it like this. It's important to find the first few derivatives by hand, so that we can look for patterns, so that we can figure out how to program a computer to do it. We'll use the product rule like this, and we can make these substitutions. And then we can simplify this expression giving us this expression, and since it can't be simplified further, then this is the answer it already looks like the higher derivatives will be sums of lots of these terms, so it would be helpful to use a computer to store all of the derivatives that we'd use in a table. Now to find the fourth derivative, which is the derivative of the third derivative. We'll use the addition rule to expand it out like this. Then we'll apply the product rule to the first term and expand out the second term using the chain rule. Then we'll make all of these substitutions. Then we'll simplify it to be this. And we can gather these last terms together because they both contain the same variable product. So this expression will simplify again to become this. So it has two terms, but when we calculate the higher derivatives they'll end up being more terms and with larger coefficients. We can then generalise the derivatives of tangent in terms of the derivative of this term with a constant multiplied by s and t's raised to the power of integers. So we can differentiate this using the product rule. Then use the chain rule to expand out these terms. And then we can simplify this expression and this gives us the derivative of any constant multiplied by any multiple of powers of s and t. We can use this to find all the derivatives of the tangent function. Notice that we'll get more and more of these sorts of terms added together. The higher order derivatives don't have that many terms. They don't increase by the nth power of 2, 
because many of the terms can be added together. Notice too that the constants can grow extremely large, but that's not too much of a problem if, for example, they get divided by a factorial. So this is how we'll be storing the tangent derivative table in the computer. We'll be storing all of the terms of the derivatives in an array called tan table. All of the derivatives from the third onwards will have multiple terms added together, so that another array called tan pointer will contain pointers that will point to the start of each of these expressions. The number of terms added together in all of these expressions will be stored in tan size, but it isn't really necessary, since we can get this number from just the pointer table. The number of pointers will be stored in n table. This is the number of derivatives that we've found. We'll also use an array called tan construct, used to construct the next derivative. So this is how we'll construct the next derivative in this table. We'll start from the third derivative and calculate the fourth. We'll use the formula we've discovered previously to construct a lot of terms from the last two terms from the last derivative. It looks like it can be simplified. We'll collect and add like terms together and place the new coefficient in the first element with like terms and put zeros in all of the other places that we've added it from. Then we'll eliminate all of the zeros. We can also swap terms if we need to. And then we can place this new expression into the tan table and attach a pointer to it. Now to make a function that can create a new derivative and place it into the construction array. We'll declare the function with all of its internal variables, and there are a lot of them. We'll get the pointers to the start and end of the pointer table where this current expression is located. We'll make a loop to go through every location in the table and construction array. K is indexed to the construction array, and J is indexed to the table where the current derivative is located. We'll get all of the variables from the table. C is the coefficient m is the integer power that s is raised to, and n is the power that t is raised to. We'll calculate the new expression for the next derivative, which consists of two terms for each term in the current derivative. So each term in the table will create two terms or blocks in the construction array. And then we'll increment the pointer to the construction array here. Each increment of k increases it by six variables. Then we'll write in the length of the construction array or next derivative here. The derivative can be simplified, and we'll do that next. This is the first simplification function that gathers like terms together and adds their coefficients. It looks to see if their powers of s and t are the same, that is, if they have the same values for m and n. So we'll make up a main loop to look at every term of this newly created nth derivative of tangent. We'll get the values of m and n, which are the integer powers of s and t, and store them before we enter the second loop. We'll enter the second loop that looks at all of the terms ahead of the term in the first loop, and we'll get the coefficients of each term and store them in variable c. Then we'll get the next values of m and n, so that we can compare them to see if they are equal. And if they are equal, then we'll add them onto the first term. Then we'll set the value of the coefficient of the other term to be zero, to get it ready to be eliminated by the zero eliminate function. So now to create the zero eliminate function, which is also a simplification function. So now we'll make up a loop to remove all of the zero terms. We'll get the coefficient of this term. And if its absolute value is greater than a million, then it isn't zero and we'll copy the contents of another non-zero term over the top of a previous term, so that all of the non-zero terms are moved over the zero terms, thus eliminating all of the zero terms. One of the indexing variables lags behind the other, so that copying the elements of the array this way eliminates all of the zero terms. And we'll increment this indexing variable to the previous term that is to be written over. The new length of this expression will be shorter, and so is different to what it was, and the new length has to be written in this global variable. And here's the function to copy the next derivative from the construction array into the table array. We'll get the start and end of the table here. 
will make a loop to go through every term to be copied, and will copy them across like this with different indexing terms, and will increment this indexing variable to the construction array here, since the for loop can only index one variable at a time, and it's already indexing the table variable. So we can collect all of these four functions and combine them into this one function that actually makes up the whole table to the nth derivative, given as a set of numbers that can make up each function. We'll manually place the first element into the table with all of its coefficients, which is the tangent function itself. And we'll set this global variable, which is the number of pointers in the table, to be the number of elements in this table so far which is only one, the tangent function that we've just put it into now. The other functions will use this global variable. So we'll make this loop to get the rest of the derivatives. We'll get the next derivative from the current derivative and place it into the construction array. Then we'll gather like terms together. Then we'll eliminate all of the zeros which completes the simplification process. Then we'll set the pointer variables to point to this new expression, its start and end. Then we'll copy this derivative into the derivative table, term by term. Then we'll increase the size of this table for each iteration of the loop, so this function can successfully find all of the first n derivatives of the tangent function. But we still have to test it. Now to make up a testing function that uses numerical methods to test that it's correct, we'll write up a message that testing is in progress. The term that we're testing must be greater than zero, because we have to test the expression before it, to perform some numerical differentiation on it. So we'll get the start and end of the table for the ith expression and we'll get the start and end of the expression that we'll be numerically differentiating to check that the expression ahead of it really is its derivative. So we'll make a loop to test a particular function in this list n1 times, which could be as large as a thousand times, which goes fairly quickly. I'll choose an angle to test. It's best to test an angle not too close to zero or 90 degrees. Then I can randomly multiply it by minus 1 so I can have a good range of angles to try. And then I'll get values for S and T. And also values for T and S that are for an angle that is angle R plus a very small number epsilon. EPS is set to be extremely small, like a millionth. We'll get values for S and T for R minus epsilon, so we'll use them for numerical differentiation. So these are accumulated values and are initially set to be zero. We'll make up a loop to get the value of the expression for angle R. We'll get the values of the three different variables. Then we'll keep adding these values onto this variable until we get the value of this expression for angle R. And we'll use another loop to find the value of the expression before it in the table. We're going to numerically differentiate it, so we'll get values of this expression for r plus epsilon and r minus epsilon. And this is the numerically differentiated value of the expression which should equal the value of the expression ahead of i in the table, but not exactly equal to it, being equal to it to the sixth decimal place. So we'll get the differences between these two values, the absolute difference and the relative difference. We'll use the relative difference for large values and the absolute difference for small values, whichever is the smallest. And if they aren't equal enough, then we'll print out this error message. And so we'll print out a message that we've completed the test. And here's the testing function that does everything. We'll firstly make up the table. Then we'll make up a loop to test the first 12 derivatives in the table and we'll call the testing function testing each element in the table about a thousand times. And so now to make up a function to print out the table that we've just created. We'll make up a loop to look at every expression in the table. We'll get the start and end of each expression in the table. We'll make up a test to look at every term of this expression. We'll get all of the variables associated with this term. 
we'll print out all these numbers as a block with curly brackets. Then we'll write a carriage return or a new line at the end. So we can write a second function to print out this table as algebraic expressions. We'll write them out larger with this heading tag. We'll loop through all of the entries in this table. And this is where we'll write out y is equal to or the nth derivative of y is equal to. And then we'll loop through all of the terms in this expression. We'll write out the entire expression here. That is the entire nth derivative of tangent. We'll have to write them out properly obeying the rules of algebra. So if for example a coefficient is 1, then we won't write it out unless both variables s and t are raised to the power of 0. This is where we'll write the plus sign, so that it's only written in between each term. And so we'll print out carriage returns or new lines here, and the heading tag ending. And so this is the table that we've calculated for the first 11 derivatives of tangent. There's not a lot of terms for the later derivatives, since they simplify well. This is good considering that each term spawns two new terms in the next derivative. The coefficients start to grow extremely large, which is to be expected for any derivative. But if they are calculated and put into a table for insertion into a matrix, for example, then they'd usually be divided by a factorial, and so remain about the same size or grow a lot smaller. They still seem to be quite workable, if anyone wants to use them. And this is the function that prints out the contents of the tangent construction array, which is good to use during the construction of this function, especially to debug it. With computers we can do all sorts of messy problems, that we'd never do by hand, because they're too useless and messy. But with computation we can do these calculations, and they do eventually have their uses. So I hope that you have found this video to be helpful and insightful, interesting and maybe even exciting. Please click like and subscribe if you did. Please leave some helpful thoughts in the comments. Feel free to share this video and thanks a lot for watching.